Hey peeps, welcome back to the Growth Lab podcast. I'm your host, Matt Harris, and I run the Growth Lab, a lead generation consultancy for cleaning businesses. In today's episode, I chat with James Fitzpatrick, managing director of AL Scrubs, an award-winning domestic and commercial cleaning business. James originally started as an oven and carpet cleaning specialist in 2017 before branching into tenancy cleans and winning a tender to clean 800 homes by simply walking onto a construction site and speaking with the site manager. After his initial success, James refocused the business to build a team, deliver an exceptional service and become a pillar in his community which led to AL Scrubs being awarded the best cleaning company in the UK by the DCBN in 2022. We talk about how having a good social media presence, showcasing your work and being involved in the community led to AL Scrubs becoming an award winning cleaning business, how refocusing from domestic and tenancy cleans to regular commercial cleans has helped his business grow, why managing the cost of your business is important for growth, the three main marketing channels James uses to win new business, and one of those will surprise you, how solving clients' problems has led to a 90% conversion rate for winning commercial contracts, the importance of pricing your cleaning service, the importance of pricing your cleaning service correctly and offering a value-focused service, and why James has decided to grow his business by buying other cleaning businesses. For more tips on lead generation and insights on the most successful strategies tools and tactics to help grow your cleaning business sign up for the growth lab newsletter via the link in the episode description Are you ready let's dive in i am here with james fitzpatrick really excited to have this chat with james today he has got a wide and varied experience but i'm particularly going to hone in on how he started how he started and grew his cleaning business so james welcome to the show thank you very much for joining us Thanks for having me, Matt. So look, we were just having a chat before we went on about how you started with your cleaning business. So why didn't you share that share that story with the audience? So as I said earlier, I kind of fell into the cleaning industry. When I left school, all my friends got a job in McDonald's and I went for an interview and unfortunately I didn't get the job. So I was the only one out of my friends that didn't get the job in McDonald's. <laughs> they, they asked me, why do, why do you want to work here? And my response was, it's easy to get a job in McDonald's. Mate. <laughs> It wasn't. And I wanted free Mackey D's. Come on, give me free Mackey D's. <laughs> well, I was gutted. So I went and did like, a couple of wee like, training courses, bricklaying, tiling and things like that. I'd done bricklaying for a wee bit and that that stopped. So I was unemployed and I got a work placement in a warehouse. So during that work placement, I was getting my job seekers and maybe a wee bit extra on the top. And then they took me on because I was working hard. And then they... I got promotion to be a forklift driver, then a HGV driver, then I was the assistant transport manager. So I kind yeah. of worked my way up over the eight years. I always wanted more. So I was always trying to think, what else can I do? And I seen an advert on Facebook or something for an oven cleaning franchise. And I was cleaning ovens, you earn 70 grand a year. And I thought, <laughs> wow, do that. So obviously that wasn't the case, but I seen that and I spoke to my friend, my best friend and said, listen, why don't we, Chuck our jobs, we'll go and get trained up how to clean ovens and we'll come back and we'll, we'll be oven cleaners and that's what we've done. We went down to England, done a course, I say it was a course, basically I just went out and worked with a guy uh, doing four, three jobs a day cleaning ovens and this was apparently oh, the wow. course. Yeah. We, we done that, we came back up and then we done ovens and carpet cleaning. Okay. We've done that for two years and that's kind of how it started. I noticed that obviously your your cleaning business won an award last year. So yeah. talk to me about the journey from starting with oven and carpet cleaning to how you ended up winning winning that award last year. So last year we won the best cleaners in the UK at the Cleaning Industry Awards. So for 2017 to 2019, we were cleaning ovens and carpets. But again, we wanted more. So I got a portfolio, cleaned a couple of my friends' houses, my mum's house. I like took before and after pictures and put into letting agencies. Listen, we, we, we do a lot of deep cleaning. If you're looking for any cleaners, can you give us a shout? And I was showing them pictures. I was yeah. getting into building sites, saying that we're experienced builders cleaners. If you're looking yeah. for any cleaners, give us a shout. And slowly we started to get work. So I got my mum involved. She was our cleaner. She trained yeah. us up how to clean. Nice. So well, doing two end attendances a day, working to eight, nine o'clock at night. Uh, and then I got a big contract. It was a, it's a big rejet biggest regeneration contract outside of London for cleaning new built houses. Oh, wow. Again, I went through the tender process. I shouldn't say this because we're still doing the contract just now, but yeah. kind of winged it a wee bit. And we got that contract to clean 800 yeah. new built houses. So 
I had to employ another couple wow. of people. And yeah. it went, it kind of built up from there. I just slowly employed people. But where I went wrong was I was trying to do too much. I was trying to do ovens, carpets, gutters, boulders. We were just trying to do everything with free staff. So that's kind of... And 800 houses. That's over that 10-year project. Okay. It was. So okay. we're still currently doing that just now. There's 25, 30 staff to help us now, so it's no problem. <laughs> So how how did that opportunity come about then? How where did you hear about that? Did you apply for it online? Like how how did you well, the, the award or the the big contract? The big contract. We'll come back to the award, but the big contract. The, the, the big contract that came about. I just I went into a building site. I went into a building site and asked, "Can I speak to the the QS?" And they, they came out and they gave me an email address and I emailed the QS saying, "We're a cleaning company based in Glasgow. We look to do builders cleans." Can you reach out if any tenders come up? And this tender came up, and part of the project was you need to give back to the community and things like that. So I was, I was dropping off the Easter eggs to the local schools and doing nice. food parcel drops uh, in my, my free time, and I was I showcased that. And I think they, they liked that, and maybe they liked me as a person. And we got the contract over some really large companies. So all of that stemmed from. You go just... to a building site, just go to a building site, asking for an email address and send an email. So no AdWords, that. no social media, no, none nothing, of that. No, like literally just... never, never cleaned a building site in my life, but my, she worked, before she came with me, she worked with another cleaning company. Yeah. So she would tell me that when you do building sites, there's a first clean, second clean and third clean. So on the tender, I'm trying to figure out, right, how much is a first clean, mum? How much is a second clean? <laughs> asking, asking her, so... She helped me with the pricing and things like that. That's good. I remember, so I had, when I had a cleaning biz, I did the same thing. I, I used to, I used to live in St. Albans and literally I would just get in the car and just drive to every site and I'd go and speak with the site manager and ask, you know, have you got cleaners arranged? And to be perfectly honest, I ended up getting, you know, ended up getting quite a bit of work as a result of that. And it was, you know, there was a bit of follow-up email, but it was just having the balls to kind of just show up just go yeah. to site or show up at the at the building contractor's office. I did that as well and just said, look, can I <laughs> can I speak with the QS or you know whoever is responsible for, for arranging the cleanings? What drove you to to take that approach? I've not got a I've not got an entrepreneurial background. None of, none of my family have businesses, anything like that. So I was just I didn't know what else to do. I didn't realise you could have a marketing campaign or things like that. I just thought I'm gonna make a portfolio and just go straight to the person I want to work for. Within the first year, we were doing work for 10 letting agencies. Doing end it only took one to give us opportunity. And then when we went to the second one, I said, oh, well, we do cleans for that letting agency. And yeah. we started to get more pictures for our, our portfolio. Plus, we were, we were cheap. We were probably undercutting a lot of cleaning companies because we had just started. And we were happy to make like 70 pound each per day. Yeah. At the time, that's what we were happy to do. So it was more than what we were getting in our last jobs. Nah, fair enough. So let's go back to you winning the award. So that was 2017, 2018. Once you realised that you, you can't do it all by yourself, talk to me about the evolution of the business, and then and then obviously you know being nominated for and, and winning the award last year. So where my business changed was my mum, as I mentioned, was one of my cleaners, but our, our health, our legs were getting arthritis in our legs, and she couldn't clean as as much as she would like to. But I couldn't just let my mum go. One of the reasons I did this was because she worked for another cleaning company and I don't want her working until she's 70 cleaning. So my job in the office, what I used to do was clean to five, six o'clock, go home and catch up with emails, invoices. I still worked to 12 o'clock at night. So I gave my mum an admin job. She worked in the office five days a week, nine to five, doing emails, sending quotes out, invoices, and that gave me so much free time to, mm. to go out there and, and try and get more work, work on recruitment and get a marketing camp. And what was like, once you managed to get that free time, what, what was your first priority? Obviously getting someone to do the admin, that was your mum, that yeah. was taken care of. And then what, what, was, what was your main focus after, after outsourcing that? When, when I got the free time, I probably took my, my off the ball a wee bit, a property investment. So, because my mum was, had the cleaners cleaning, my mum in the office, I should have probably been out there still chatting doors, getting more work, but I think I yeah. got too complacent. And I went and done property investment, so I started a home buyers company, 
to buy yeah. houses, flipped a couple of houses, got a couple of buy to lets. But I realised even doing that is like, I spent ten thousand pound on marketing to buy houses, and I never got much out of it. So mm. I realised I went back to the cleaning. And I realised that's where my passion is. Yeah. All businesses are hard. You're not even not much what it says on YouTube or podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's too easy. Make your millions in 90 days. None of that. So 2020, 21. So only like for last year, I came back and I thought I changed my full business structure and just only I'm starting to do commercial work now, regular work. Before okay. then, it was all like pressure washing, carpets, ovens. I've sold my carpet cleaning business. We don't, I don't want to do any more builders cleans apart yeah. from the contracts we're in. And my main focus is on regular cleaning, doctor surgeries, offices salons yeah, yeah. And things like that that's my focus now and it's okay and is that was it that change that led you to winning the award or was it you know in terms of your service delivery as well because i you know yeah. i saw online your reviews are always pretty stellar you know everyone's happy with your service you've got a big old following on on your facebook page you know what what were the contributing factors to to being nominated and and to winning so the, to win the award there was four judges and then it went down to four people all over the UK to make a public vote. But part of the reason the feedback I got was because I do have a good social media presence that on my business page for my cleaning company, we put two or three posts a day, showcase your work, let people see what you're doing. Uh, I was doing stuff for the community and things like that. Like I said earlier, dropping off food parcels and mm. bringing younger guys in uh, to work with us. That One of the boys I got working for us, he lost his job. I brought him in, he worked with me for four months, he passed his driving test and nice. he was loving, just loving his life again and he was, he was only 18 but he couldn't get a job anywhere else. I brought him on, gave him a job, passed his driving test and all that and then left us. <laughs> but that's, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> but you helped him along but, the journey, uh, right? Which is... So I think we won the award because obviously we showcased what we're doing. Everything yeah. that I'm doing, I put it on social media for people to see and I, I, that's, I'm not sure, obviously I wasn't a judge but that but you were a judge this year, right? I saw that. You... I was a judge this year at the awards this year. So yeah. I know how stressful they must have been the, the year that I went. Applicants you need to go through. Uh, the how was that experience? That. experience? How how was that experience? It was a it was a good experience. It, it was good to see what other cleaning companies are doing out there, and inspiring stories and things like that. And it was and it, I quite enjoyed it. It was a bit nervous pronouncing the, the awards and things like that, but it was a really? it was a good experience. That's good. And has so has winning the award has has that done has that like boosted the profile of your business? I'm I'm guessing it's quite a it's quite a feather in your cap to kind of use that in your marketing and that as well, right? So when I'm sending emails out, it will say at the bottom of my my email, like award winning cleaning company UK. Mm. Same when I'm sending letters out, it will always be there. The awards that we've won, we won the best yeah. cleaner in Scotland the same year, so it's always there. But what I, I should have done inspired by people that won the awards this year. The ones yeah. that won, won the award this year have been on the newspapers, <laughs> uh, been oh, featured really? on different things. I should oh, have wow. reached out to the newspapers to get... More coverage, more get coverage, some press. More press yeah, coverage. Yeah. Uh, one of the ladies that won one of the awards this year uh, was on like, three different newspapers and things like that. So Really? Oh, wow. The newspapers, she's like, James, I just reached out to them. I thought, yeah. so it's, yeah. it's like, simple things like that can change your business. And for yeah. that article in the newspaper, she got a massive contract a few days later because oh, they wow. seen it like, on the, the, the thing on Facebook from the newspaper. Yeah, that's really good. So, look, you mentioned when you sort of came back to, to cleaning in terms of changing your your business model. Like, what what were some of the key changes which which you implemented to kind of make your your business more focused on you know getting recurring work rather than you know the one off ad hoc type work. So a couple of things that I changed obviously was what I would normally do, two, two girls out working, if they finish at three o'clock, send them up the road to three o'clock, pay them to five. So the more cleaners that you get, if I've got 25 cleaners all finishing two hours early, five days a week, that I worked out, it could cost me about 50 grand a year just doing, mm -hmm. doing that. So I was a bit more strict with what you're paying the cleaners to do, pay them at that time. 
You've lost me again, Matt. What was the, what was the question? No, no, I, asked, I, I just asked you. So <clears throat> when you refocused your efforts on your cleaning business, you mentioned wanting to win more recurring work. So yes. my question was just around, like, what were some of the key changes that you implemented to kind of give you that focus and direction? So one of the, the key things that I did, I got my, my manager, my supervisor, to sit down together and look at the runs that the girls have got. So... I had two girls out in, in a van doing like six small jobs. It might be six small jobs, nine o'clock to five o'clock, an hour here uh, in each job. So what we've done now, well, they use their cars. One cleaner can get four jobs done. So okay. one cleaner can get four jobs done rather than two cleaners getting six jobs done. Mm. So we, we structured that a bit better. I got a, a good marketing campaign. I, I spoke to an ads man and he's doing well for us. We're getting a lot of leads in. I changed my... My sales pitch, the way I speak to clients, I learned how to speak to clients when I'm going out to, to quote jobs and stuff like that. And a bit of networking and things, get myself out there. So what are you doing on the marketing front? What are your Facebook, obviously, because you know, you've know you got a, a big following on there. LinkedIn, I, I would imagine as well. Like, What are your primary channels? What, what do you kind of focus on most in terms of marketing? So marketing, mostly, a lot of our stuff is through word of mouth, but marketing now is... Google pay per click. So I've got a, a someone that runs that for me. I give them a fee. They put the ads out there with all the, the keywords and things like that. My manager in the office will send letters to ask her to do at least ten letters a day to, yeah. to buildings or offices. Tell them a bit about us. If you're looking for a cleaner, get in touch. Active in social media. Yeah, that's if that's the three main things that okay. we do to get the. To get the and which one out of those? Sorry, go on. What I'm going to do now, it's on my notes, I'm going to go into all my commercial clients. I'm going yeah. to ask them for a three-minute interview, sitting down with me, what do you think of the service, how long you've been with Ask them like three questions and put that out there, put that out there on my ads, put it in social media, like a, a small interview from yeah. someone who uses our services and what they think about us. And also get feedback, right, to kind of know yeah. what to put in your yeah. marketing going forward. Because, you know, if you speak with or your commercial clients, you ask them three questions, you know, that's quite a lot of feedback that you can then use repurpose in your yeah. marketing campaigns and get more yeah, similar exactly. clients, right? So which which out of those three channels do you do you feel is the most successful? What what drives most of your leads? Up to my game a wee bit. I would say yeah. the Google the Google pay per click, we're getting a lot of leads from commercial clients looking for new cleaners, just looking for reliable cleaners, the company they've got. They don't have cover when the cleaner's not there. They're not using the correct products. All the same problems. So yeah. uh, we are getting in there to, to solve our problems. And we're seeing a lot of that. This year we've had nine contracts oh, just wow. for we've started back. And it's all people that's got cleaning companies and they're not happy with the service. That's really good. And pay-per-click. That's cool. pay, pay-per-click. So I've just recently bought my business partner out of the cleaning company. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to double my ad spend on yeah. Google. And this year, my full, my full focus is on the, the cleaning industry. No shiny objects, yeah. anything. It's just purely my cleaning company and buying other businesses. No crypto, nice. no forex. <laughs> no. Focus, man. Just focus. <laughs> and, it, and is it on like winning more commercial clients? And, and if so, like what type of commercial clients are you going after? Purely just commercial for me now. I, I will still do the, the, the one-off deep cleans because yeah. we've got bills there at work 95. But... Uh, and, Deep cleans, you can, it's quite profitable. No pressure washing, gutters, carpets, or anything like that. It's all one off deep cleans and commercial clients and large offices, doctor surgeries, salons, things like that. That's where we're focused now. So, look, obviously, since you have refocused, and even, even I guess, before you, you got distracted by a shiny object, like clearly <laughs> your, your business was, was on quite a growth trajectory right it was quite on a on a growth path so what what do you think in your experience is does it, what does it take to to like grow a successful cleaning business if you want to grow your business i believe you need to take a step away and work on the business a lot of people if you're starting your cleaning company they'll do what i've did you'll, you'll be working 95 and doing everything yourself because you're afraid if you if you bring somebody on you're losing 30 grand a year and you can't afford yeah. to do that but your business will never grow, I believe, if you don't take that step and like, work on the business, not in the business. If you're spending five hours in the office, you get ideas are flowing and 
new things pop up. You can work on your systems and processes. You can't do that if you're, you're constantly cleaning. And when did you have that realization? Was it when you came back to, to cleaning or was it before before you left when you kind of, your mum was doing more of the admin stuff? It's when I, when I came back, after I got my mum involved, my mum came, uh, did the admin stuff about a year and a half ago. So it's not that long ago, 2021. Okay. The end of 2021, that's when my mum uh, came and did the admin stuff. And that's when I, I've completely changed my mindset, my focus. And how, how have you gone about building your team since then? Like, talk me through, you know, the, the rest of your your support network. What does that look like? So I've got, uh, say, my mum works in the office. She does all the admin, the invoices and things like that. I've got a couple of supervisors. They'll do One will do the rota and stuff. And I've got another... And go out and check the cleaners and check in with clients. And now I'm training the supervisor to be like a more managerial role who's going yeah. to go out and do the jobs for me as well. So sometimes I'll still go out and price the big commercial jobs because I feel yeah. as if I'm the best person to sell the business. Yeah. So the steps I'm taking now is my supervisor will be going out, or manager now, she'll be going out pricing the jobs. Julie will be running the business and I'm going to bring in another supervisor for the next couple of weeks so i'm completely hands off and focusing on buying other businesses so one thing you mentioned earlier was in terms of selling you've you've kind of changed your or improved your your sales pitch like what what led you to doing that and and how has it changed from where you started to to where it is right now so i got a business coach and they kind of helped me they're saying when you're, you're selling, you need to try and get in the, the client's head, solve their problems. Mm. Don't just go in there and say, we're the best, this, that. Yeah, go in yeah. there, ask what their problems are and solve their problems. Because everybody that goes out there to quote, they're all going to say they're the best. That's mm. just a fact. So you're going in there and just, just speak to them. Speak to them like you're, they're your friend. And obviously so, try and solve their problems. And just build a rapport with clients. And how, like, how much of an impact has that had? Have you, do you track your conversions? Are you like converting, you know, 50% more now than you were before? Yeah. Or So I'm doing pretty good. Like the, this year, the nine, 10 quotes I've got out, I've got nine. He came back and he says, James, we've got three other people. I was very impressed with your approach and things like that, but purely down to the price. We were two pounds okay. cheaper than other people, but four pounds. No, we were two pounds dearer than the the person he's going to offer it to, but four yeah. pounds dearer than the company he's, pre he's got at the moment. So he's willing to pay that extra, but not four pounds an hour more. But he was kept messaging me saying, "If it doesn't work out, can I come back and things like that?" I'm, I'm I know, promised. really good impression. What what people are doing? They're, they're going in there and promising a service that they can't deliver. They can yeah. go in there and get a cheap rate. That's absolutely fine. But if you're giving a, a cheap rate. You, you can't afford to send your supervisor in once a month to do audits. You can't afford to fix mistakes and you can't afford to give them good products or give them cover when your cleaner's off on holiday. So what are coming to us all have the same issues. They're getting a cleaning company that's giving them a cheap rate. But if you're getting a cheap rate, they're not going to get, provide you a good service. So is it a case of your realizing now that or, or clients are realizing now that there's not to be sort of price driven but to be more sort of value driven right to kind of look at the overall yeah. service with the exception of the one who said you know four pounds over what what we're currently paying just doesn't work which you know is, is kind of fair enough yeah, you've that, seen go on. what i said there was i forgot what i was going to say there <laughs> no, no, I was just saying, like, with, I guess, the nine out of 10 contracts that you've won, and, and in saying that you don't target, like, going in as the cheapest price, is it a case of your finding clients are, are now looking more for, like, a, a value-based service rather than just focusing on the bottom line and what it's costing yeah, them? Yeah, the, the company that they've, they've got at the moment, they're telling me the issues they've got. So I'm saying, well, if you want a better service, you're obviously going to need to Pay more. It's just a fact. <laughs> we're not going to come in here and provide you a better service than the current company for the same yeah. price. It, it does, doesn't work like that. Yeah. But it's just try to educate them a wee bit why your cost are why why you, you cost that much. And we're not very expensive. I believe I know those people more expensive than us, but yeah. we're, we're not. We provide a, a really good service, and the cost that we, we do it for covers the service you provide. 
So talk to me about your service. Like what, you know, just give me, give me, give me, I guess, some of the, some of the main like benefits of your service. What, what do you, you know, provide to clients when, when they start from you from day one? Yeah, so the, the cleaners have all got their own app. I know a lot of companies are doing this now, but they've got a clock in and clock out. It timestamps it. On the yeah. app, they've got their, their checklist for the job. So it, empty bins, and they physically need to tick it when they've completed it. So empty bins, clean extractor in the bathroom, mop floors, wipe desks. It's all simplified. So nice. as they've cleaned it, they need to tick it. It's, I understand things can get missed sometimes. So for we did the checklists, nothing's really getting missed anymore because they look, look at the checklist and go, I forgot to empty the bins and they'll go back yeah, and yeah. empty the bins unless they're sitting in their cars after the cleaning just has happened because I've had complaints before and I'm saying sure. to the cleaner, you've ticked it, you've emptied the bins, were you doing it in your car? Yes. Yeah. So the whole point of this is to, as you've done it, just tick it off the, the list. Yeah. Uh, so we, and after it get, my supervisor got, does an end of job report, so at the, end, okay. the end of the month she'll go out and she's got a different checklist, but she'll rate the clean out a five, and if it's got okay. a five star rating, it goes onto the homepage on the app, and all the cleaners get to see who's oh, performing nice. well. So when I'm speaking to clients, I say, well, we call it the app of shame. If you're yeah. not doing good, everybody gets to see it, and it keeps everybody motivated because they know they're getting audited at the end of the month, and everything's on, on the app. So yeah. do our checks. A lot of cleaning companies will go in and say, we'll, we'll check in you once a month, and we'll, we'll do audits. And they don't do it. They don't yeah. do it. Or they will do the audit in any problems that's there. They don't fix them. Yeah. So it, it's pointless. So we are quite strict with that. We will come out once a month. And if there's any issues, we will get it resolved. Do you stay in touch with clients throughout the month as well? Do you, you know, just like pop in and say, hey, just wanted to, you know, press the flesh, just make sure that everything's cool. Like, do you do that? randomly or, or is it just you know they get used to that once a month visit visit and if there's anything that crops up in the meantime then they know they can contact you so my supervisor will randomly pop in sometimes if she's passing she'll pop into a place how, how is everything everything yeah. i used to go out and do it but now i'm finding clients are texting me and messaging me and as i'm trying to take a step out everybody wants to speak to me because i'm the one out yeah, yeah. The business saying we are great and i build a relationship at the start and they tend to like me for whatever reason, I don't know. But yeah. I found that they would always want to speak to me all the time, so I'm trying to get my supervisor to, to pop in more often and once a month, build a rapport, get to know the clients. And if you're doing a good job and the clients like you as a person, they'll, they'll never leave you, no matter how yeah, That's good. So let's let's talk a little bit about your, your team. So obviously you mentioned the app of shame in terms of, you know, giving some accountability to the staff. Like how, yeah. how do you manage your how do you manage your team on a sort of day to day or week to week basis? Do you have team meetings? Do you have like regular communication? Like what what is what's the sort of process that you have? Yeah, so we my the ladies in the office once a month or once every two months, they'll do a, a review. So they get the cleaners in, have a chat. Is there anything, any issues, anything you want to speak about? And everything gets brought on the table. So that's good for us. If they've got any issues, we'll solve it. And it's good for them as well. They, they actually look forward to it, to getting things off their chest. We're not perfect. We don't yeah. change things. And sometimes I can see the cleaners don't, they don't like it. So once they come in, we can chat about it and we can decide if we're going to keep doing that going forward and things. So doing reviews with the cleaners, catching up regularly is it's important for sure for sure and just before we went on obviously we mentioned one thing which has always been troubling for the cleaning industry is you know finding hiring and retaining good staff what what is some of the approaches that you've taken to kind of not just find staff but to retain them as well do you provide them regular training do you you know provide i don't know like employee of the month award you know stuff yeah. that is that kind of goes outside of just monetary rewards that sort of thing so the employee of the month thing, that's something we've just started. It's not employee of the month, we've just got a, a big spinny wheel and we're putting all the cleaners on it mm -hmm. and we'll just spin it. Whatever it lands on, we'll get a £20 pound voucher or something for Tesco or for Asda and that's something we'll, we'll start, we've started just now. What else, what else is it you asked again, Matt? Sorry. But find, finding, finding good staff for one finding and, the then, good staff, and, so, and keeping them. So what we do to get the staff, we obviously put ads on it and stuff like that. The recruiting, if there's no contracts there, we'll still recruit, we'll get people in, speak to them, and we've got them on a, a database. So we've yeah. got a text messaging database with over 
200 cleaners on it that's been in for an interview before. Mm. And if a new contract comes up, we'll send out a, a mass of details of the contract. If you're interested, reply. And the ones that's interested, we can look in the database, find more about them, and bring them in for, a, for an interview. But, but it is tough. Try to get staff is tough. We have been quite lucky. The staff that we've got have mostly stayed. The only ones that's left is to go and start their own cleaning company. But really? The ones, oh my God. The ones got, With the lessons that you've taught them, I guess, right? So, but again, I, I, if somebody wants to do that, then I, I wish them well. So uh, the girls that we've got working for us tend to stay. Uh, they've worked with other cleaning companies and they, they like it. We, we're a good wee team. We've got on well. If they need to nip away early or they need a day off or whatever, we'll, we'll let them yeah. do it. So I'm curious, like, you know, you seem to manage, obviously, the, the staff situation quite well, despite the challenges. You've got a good sales process and obviously the, the pitch has been revised and your conversion rates are off the chart based on... I'll let you know when I get the next the next thing. I mean, but still, right, if you're rolling at 90% right now, then that, that is that is yeah. an exceptional rate. But what, what do you think is like one decision that you've taken in your business that has had the biggest impact on your growth? So when I first, I learned a lesson just last year, recently, I was more interested in trying to hit a, like, the, the million pound mark, like just getting my, my sales up rather than yeah. profit. So a lesson I learned was I got a, a, a good contract, it was earning me over a hundred grand a year, which was which is decent, a hundred grand a year, paid monthly, came with 15 cleaners, cleaning seven days a week. The profit I was was getting was only two two grand, two and a half grand a month profit. Oh, wow. But it gave me a lot of problems. The reason I got that is because I put my price down a little bit just to get yeah. the, the big contract. But it was constant. It was cleaners not turning up at weekends. It was like seven days a week cleaning. So mm. I lost that contract. And the next contract I got was half the time, half the staff, no weekend work. And I made yeah. an extra grand a month profit. Oh, wow. So the lesson I learned was don't undervalue yourself. Don't yeah. go in with a cheap price just to get the, stick to your prices, get your prices and stick to it. I'm yeah. doing less work, less hours, less work, less staff, less stress, and I'm making more money. Yeah. So it's not always about getting the big contracts with the big numbers. Make yeah. sure you're pricing things correctly. So don't be a busy fool. That was the biggest thing I learned. That's a really valuable lesson. So look, let's change tact a little bit. I know, like, having looked at your LinkedIn profile, you're looking at buying other cleaning businesses, right? Talk to me a little bit about how you started down that road. And, and is that, like, one avenue that you're looking to grow your own business? Yeah, so I understand how hard it is to, to grow a business. If I want to double my turnover organically with what I'm doing, it's going to take me years. But I yeah. can do that in the space of a couple of months with buying other, other cleaning companies. So... Through networking, meeting people who's actively doing acquisitions, I realised buying a business is the way forward. Someone's bought a business for 40 years, they've got the, the foundations are in place, they want to retire, for instance, then they, they go to a broker. They, what we are finding is brokers are overvaluing a business to get their upfront fee and a business mm -hmm. stays in the market for five, six years. It doesn't sell because it's overvalued and nobody wants to buy it. So yeah. I'm targeting people that want to sell their business, but they don't know where to start. And that that's the kind of route I'm going down now. To buy a business and implement what I've learned over the past five, six years, build yeah. a management team and just roll up all these businesses. And how do you go about finding these businesses? Is there like a database you target? Do you do research on the internet and just think, oh, that looks interesting. Let me you know, tap up the owner and see whether they're open to selling? Like, what, what approach do you take? Yeah, so I, I just send letters. Simple simple as that. So at the moment, I'm in talks to buy a, a coach company. So it's like 33 okay. buses that will take kids to school and things like that. I've got a meeting on Monday with a cleaning company, turns over 4 million. Wow. So I've got a few things in the pipeline. And the, the way I got them was just simply sending them a letter. Hi, a bit about myself, I'm James, and I'm actively looking to buy a business. If yeah. you're interested in selling just now or in the future, it won't hurt to have a chat. Something simple as that. I don't want to give yeah. away all my tips, but no, that's I, fine. As much as you're as much as you're willing to give away, but yeah, you know, but that's, but that's, that's that. Fair send up fifty letters a week. Reply it costs money on stamps, envelopes, but consistency is the key for me. It might take yeah. a year, two year, three year to buy the right company, but I'm going to keep keep doing it. Times right, I'll, I'll get that business that I want. 
And have you got have you got like like a profile of the type of business that you want in terms of you know turnover and headcount and all that kind of thing, or or is it a little bit more like I'll just pick an industry and see what I get yeah. back, then qualify whatever comes through and and sort of go from there. Yeah. So I, I go on. Uh, I don't know if you've heard it. Endo. Endo's a. Yep. So I go on Endo basically, and you can filter out what you're looking for. So turnover starting from 500k. Been in business yeah. for five years, and it takes away all the the smaller companies that I may not want to buy. A cleaning a cleaning company, I'll happily buy a cleaning company. It's turning over two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand if they're based in Scotland, because I've yeah. got the management team here that could probably run that. But with the other companies I've looked to buy, it needs to have some sort of management team in place because I don't want to buy myself a job. I will yeah, win. Yeah. And maybe if there's a management team there, maybe make it better promote yeah. the current managers to a co- company director to help me run a business. But I don't yeah. want to go in and buy myself another job that I, where I'm working at 12 o'clock at night sometimes. So You've done that already. You don't want to do that again. Once it's been a, about for a while, maybe ready to retire and might not have what to do next. And how how did you, how have you built your management team? How, how did you find the people to join you? I, I know yeah, you that, obviously mentioned, go on. So my mum, obviously, she fell into the role. So she was a bit of a dinosaur. <laughs> She'd never used a computer before. So it was trying to show yeah. her how to send an email was hard at the start. <laughs> and I've not got a lot of business experience either. So we kind of started off slow. I don't have anybody in my family to ask questions about. So as I said, my mum couldn't even send an email. So, nice. And then the other management managers we've got is just through Indeed. One of the supervisors I got, Chupied over to me through another company for the contract that okay. I got. They have been great, and this current supervisor that I've got, I got her through indeed, and she's she's been great. And on the like acquisition side, how how have you met the the people that help you? You know, once you've identified the business, and obviously you've gone through the the acquisition process. I guess do they then take over the the running of the business that you've acquired, or do they like supervise or mentor the existing management team? How did you find them initially, and and what what sort of role do they play once you've acquired your business? So one of the the, the guys that I'm joint venturing with at the moment has got okay. a thirty years experience in manufacturing, so he's owned okay. a lot of big companies in Scotland. So he's got the experience, he he's got the network and things like that. I don't know everything, so it's always good to buddy up with somebody that, that knows more than me. Yeah. But I'm finding the, the leads, and then when I've got a good lead, I'm speaking to the, the person that's hoping to sell. I'll bring my JV partner in, we'll look at the accounts together, and obviously we'll raise the finance, and we'll buy it, and we'll work as a team. I might be yeah. take less than, if they're doing more in the business, that's they're obviously going to make more money than me. But we'll work yeah. together, building the team, and then we'll take a step back, and start acquiring similar businesses to what we just bought, and we can we can go for there. But I'll always have somebody, as you say, that like a mentor. There's somebody there that's got thirty years of experience. I'm not getting into this with no knowledge. Yeah. I've got a team behind me from solicitors that's been doing it for thirty years, financial advisors and accountants, and people that specialise on acquisitions who who have got good relationships with brokers who are helping. Yeah. So, just leveraging other people's experience, Matt. So look, just before we wrap up, I've got one more question and then I've got a couple of quick fire questions because I appreciate we've been on nearly 45 minutes, so I'm, I'm grateful <laughs> of your time. But as as you've grown the, your, your cleaning business, what do you, what's been your biggest challenge and, and how, how have you overcome it? The biggest challenge is I was probably my own biggest challenge, to be honest with you. Uh-huh. As I said, the, other, the, the shiny object thing, I would do something and then I would fix see something else and move to that and look for the five six years I've been doing business I've lost money in crypto forex I've done property <laughs> investing I've done pressure washing gutter cleaning I've rather than just do something this is the, the only advice I'd give somebody as well figure something out what you want to do and stick to it be a master at it and then once you've got that mastered move on to something else so, Fair enough. I'm probably my Best own. enemy. Yeah, that's cool. Well, look, I've got two quick cry questions. One is, what do you think is your one golden rule for running a successful cleaning? I think I, I know where we're going with this because you've kind of just given me the answer. Well, the one thing that I would say is when you're going out to price jobs or speak to clients, I think I touched on it earlier, don't 
over promise something if you can't deliver it because yeah. you're going to lose the contract and you're going to lose your reputation if you get complaints you need to deal with it perfect we have had complaints like anybody does and that complaints turned into a good review because of the way we, we dealt with it so don't don't shy away from things you will do yeah. things wrong but you need to fix it don't promise something that you can't deliver either because then we'll get the contract when you don't deliver it yeah <laughs> we're changed around the corner no, that's cool. And the last, the last one from me is what? What do you think are three non-negotiable skills that are essential or have been essential to you growing your cleaning business? Yeah. So, marketing. You need to be good at marketing. Not you personally. Get somebody that's good at marketing to run ads for you. Be good at sales. You, if you can, you can have the best business out there, I believe. But if you're not good at selling it, then you'll you'll not get get anywhere. So you need to brush up your your sales and. Be active, be active in social media, network. If people don't know who you are, who your business is, you'll you'll not you'll not get anywhere, you'll not get any any sales. So get yourself out there, let people know who you are and what you're doing. Perfect. And look, James, where where can people find out more about you online? I'm active on LinkedIn. LinkedIn's probably the best place to get me. Yep, on LinkedIn, James Fitzpatrick. Perfect. Well, look, James, really appreciate you taking the time this afternoon. Thank you very much for joining me. It was a conversation packed full of a few little nuggets. So I was interested to learn about your journey. And look, I'll I'll leave you to crack on with the rest of the day. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time, Matt. Thanks to James for joining us on the Growth Lab podcast. And thanks to you guys for listening. You can access the show notes and resources. You can access the show notes and additional resources via the link in the episode description. And if you enjoy this episode, please share it with others who you think will find it useful across social media or leave a rating and review on whatever podcast platform you listen to. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at I am underscore Matt Harris. That's M-A-T-T-H-A-R-R-I-S to catch all the latest from the Growth Lab and how to generate more contract opportunities for your cleaning business. See you next time. And remember, If your cleaning business isn't growing, it's dying.